I've been asked by a few people to do a video about the Commodore Amiga, so um, here goes nothing. I've got to go quickly because there's a lot to fit in. In 1982, a guy called Larry Kaplan, ex-Atari programmer, ex-Activision founder, contacted Jay Miner, who was the designer of the Atari 2600 and 400 computer. Kaplan had been approached by a consortium of um, an oil baron and three dentists and offered $7 million to design an advanced games console. So he went to Miner and they, they formed a company called High Toro and began working on a system based around the Motorola 68000. But then Kaplan was coaxed back to Atari and Miner took over the company and secretly began building a computer. Um, the investors wanted a console but he, he added a whole load of stuff that you wouldn't have in a console, expansion ports, serial ports, parallel ports, all of that. Um, High Toro gained financing, or intended to, by producing games for the Atari 2600. But just as they were going to market with those, the console market crashed. Uh, this had the benefit, though, of Miner being able to build a computer. The investors realized there's no point building a console, no one's going to buy it. So, okay, go and build your computer. Um, by the time the hardware was more or less ready, Hi Toro, who were now going under the name Amiga, were, they were running out of money um, and they were approached by Atari who offered them three dollars per share for a million shares and loaned them five hundred thousand dollars to complete development. Now they were devious because they knew Amiga couldn't afford to pay that back and what they wanted was the custom chips and of course if, the, if, if they couldn't pay the loan back well they'd just buy the company out and they, they offered them well, 98 cents per share when Amiga couldn't pay them the loan back and it looked like Atari were going to get their way they'd get the custom chips build a console with them the Amiga computer would be out of the window but then at the last minute Commodore stepped in paid Atari a million dollars to pay off the loan and bought Amiga for $4.24 per share and in 85 the Amiga 1000 was released and it was promoted at its unveiling by Andy Warhol and Debbie Harry um, the Amiga 1000 didn't really sell well it was very expensive fairly underpowered um, but then in 1987 Commodore set their own people to work designing the Amiga 500. Most of the original designers, J Minor and the like, had already left. They, they didn't like the way Commodore were doing things. So they left. The Amiga 500 was the one you see here. Cut down, much cheaper, um, good home computer, fairly affordable. Um, and at the same time that they released the Amiga 2000, which was like a big box version with a hard drive, a uh, separate main case, keyboard and a monitor. Um, mainly for business. And there were other models, there was like the CDTV which was completely abortive, the Amiga 500 Plus which had an upgraded operating system, upgraded graphics, a little bit upgraded, more more video RAM. They didn't release that in the US which was unfortunate for US gamers because most of the best games used it. Uh, then they released the Amiga 600, which was like a, a miniaturized 500 plus, but it, everyone hated it. It didn't sell at all well. Then in 94, Commodore went... No, 92. I'm getting ahead of myself. Commodore brought out the Amiga 4000 and the 1200. 4000 was a big box machine. 1200 was, you know, a smaller home version. They used the AGA chipset designed by Dave Haney. This was it, it more better graphics basically, more colours, um, improved everything. Sound was the same. Um, the 4000 had a faster CPU. They used the 030 at 25 megahertz and an 040 version at 25 megahertz. Well, the 1200 had an 020 at 14 megahertz, which wasn't a huge leap. But if you added some extra system RAM, fast RAM as they called it, it doubled the speed of it just like that, which was kind of cool. Uh, you could add accelerator cards to both machines, um, all the way up to the 68060 CPU, and then later PowerPC chips like they were using in the Apple Mac at that time, similar kind of thing to what they had in the iMac. 
Um, then in 94, Commodore went bust and were bought by Eston, uh, created a subdivision called Amiga Technologies, who continued, continued to sell 1200s and 4000s. Then in 97, Amiga was bought out by Gateway 2000, renamed Amiga International. Um, they had lots of plans, not much came of any of that. And in 2000, Amiga was bought by Amneo Development, renamed Amiga Incorporated. Uh, they kind of moved into mobile phones, you know. Um, the Amiga really became software based. But uh, a company called iTech were licensed to build a power PC based machine called the Amiga 1, and Hyperion produced OS 4. Um, right, I'll show you briefly the operating system. Let me zoom in on that. This is the original version of Workbench on the Amiga 500. It's a little bit clunky. They, uh, they went for a very high contrast just so you could run it on a TV and still be able to see what you're doing. You know, most machines, well, like the Apple, using a graphic user interface, you needed a monitor. Uh, but the Amiga, you know, it, it was designed so you could run it on a telly, so they went for high contrast. It's a lot like Windows, really. Only, of course, it came out a lot earlier than Windows. It was revolutionary at the time. And it was multitasking. You know, you could run more than one program at, one, at once, which under DOS, well, yeah. The less said about that, the better. So there it is. I mean, it, it's... On a 500, it's fairly slow, fairly clunky, kind of ugly. But it worked well. On the 1200, oh, what am I doing? Here we go. Now, this isn't the standard colour scheme. This is my own colour scheme. Um, it's kind of hideous. But I just, I just like the original blue. Let's see. Yeah. It's, it's a lot quicker. This is running on the 68060 processor, so it, it's way quicker. And Directory Opus was one of those must-have programs. Um, file management, basically. You, you could just copy things around, you know, from one folder into another folder here, there, everywhere. Do all kinds of processes on them, archive them, unarchive them, or you name it. You, you could pretty much ignore Workbench and work in Directory Opus if you wanted to. It was a wonderful thing. I'm going to show you inside my 1200 tower, just because it's a little bit special, so I don't think you'll be able to see an awful lot. Um, yeah, well you've got the hard drive there no cradle is sitting on a load of CD cases. Uh, this is... oh, it's an expansion board of some kind. I think it's the, for the extra... I've got a high-density floppy drive which doesn't come as standard in an Amiga. They normally use double-density 880K discs, though it could read low-density PC discs, 700K or whatever, but not your high-density ones. This thing hooks up and lets you use a PC high-density drive. You've got there the Zorro bus board, which is very non-standard for a 1200. Um, that was an additional extra doofer that I bought. There is a 68060 processor in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show that to you. You might just be able to see the top of it. Um, yeah. That's my accelerator card there. That's got the 060 chip on board, extra RAM. There's also a SCSI controller built onto that, which allows it to run this CD writer, which was a very, very cool thing to have back in the day. I've got here a stripped open, stripped, yeah, get my words out, 
stripped down, opened up Amiga 1200 bog standard, and you can see the uh, the custom graphics chips here. That one's Alice. That's Gale. What's this one called? Lisa. That's a Budgie. I don't know why it's called Budgie. These are the ROM chips. Somewhere on here is the O2O processor. Uh, I'm not even sure which one it is, to be honest. I probably should have found out before recording this. That is PCMCIA socket. You could run memory cards and other gubbins on there. And that is the uh, main expansion port. Well, that's where you plug your accelerators and whatnot in. But there you have it. Very brief. Couldn't say half of what I wanted to. But, um, yeah. Serves its purpose. Thank you for watching.